Yankee fans who followed the minor league system have, have heard Gary Sanchez's name for a long time. He has a long way to go, but his offensive ceiling is really significant. You have raw power. You've got an unbelievable throwing arm. I haven't seen too many guys on the baseball field who could do it. Gary could do it. This is a guy who now they feel like could, could maybe help pretty soon. Back at the winter meetings in December, Brian Cashman, the general manager of the Yankees, said it was time to unleash the Kraken. There's the first base hit for Gary Sanchez. They'll get that ball, and the Yankees think big things for this kid, and that could be the first of many. So a single for Gary Sanchez, and he now has himself a batting average. Gary Sanchez's first major league hit came in the seventh inning on August 3rd, game number 107 on the Yankees' schedule. It came after seven seasons in the minors, after years of hype, and after months of anticipation. After all, Sanchez was supposed to be unleashed in the spring, but a poor camp meant his big league arrival would have to wait. And it took 107 games, but the Kraken had arrived. And oh, did he arrive. I have no other word. No one could have expected what Gary Sanchez did in the season's final two months. It quite literally was unprecedented. In his ninth career game, he went four for five with his first career home run. Over the next few weeks, he'd become the fastest player ever to hit 11 home runs in the major leagues, then the fastest to 18, and finally, the fastest to hit 20 homers. Over the final two months of the season, Gary Sanchez did things that had never been done before. Gary Sanchez makes you sit forward in your seat. You want to see what he can do next. It's been an unbelievable couple of months for this young catcher. His final stat line, 20 homers, 12 doubles, 42 runs batted in, and an OPS over one. The highest OPS by a Yankee with at least 50 games played in a season since Alex Rodriguez in 2007. A-Rod won the MVP that year, by the way. And in 2016, Sanchez played like an MVP, helping keep the team in the playoff race right down to the season's final week. His accomplishments put his name in the record books, alongside Yankees greats like Ruth, DiMaggio, and Mantle. He's comfortable in the box. Reminds me of just a veteran presence that just has been here the whole time. I've never seen anybody do this. I've never seen somebody get called up and impact the team this much in this short period of time. His breakthrough, though, expanded beyond his offensive play. He completely shut down opposing teams' running games, throwing out 13 runners in 32 chances, or 41% of attempted base stealers, 12 points above the league average. Time and again, he was able to pop out of his stance and rocket a perfect throw to catch a runner. He unleashed the cannon again! Sanchez was so out of this world good that he forced himself into the Rookie of the Year conversation, despite playing just 53 games. According to Fangraphs, he led all AL rookies with 3.2 wins above replacement edging out Tigers pitcher Michael Fulmer, who started 26 games for Detroit. In fact, Sanchez led all American League catchers in war, according to Fangraphs. Again, he played in just 53 games. That's how dominant he was. And it's fun to see a young kid call up here and live up to expectations. Obviously, he's set some big ones right now, but it's we're out of adjectives up here. The arrival of Gary Sanchez in August was a move made with an eye on 2017. Give the catcher a chance to learn his position and hope he can grow into a productive player by next year. As it turns out, Sanchez was ripe to be a star now and has changed expectations heading into next summer. Asking him to replicate his MVP caliber numbers is a tall order, but after witnessing history over the final two months of 2016, 
maybe it isn't completely out of the question. You can see more Yankees on demand and Yankees scoreboard content by clicking here. And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel right there.